Welcome back to Emotional Mojo. You know, the holidays are hectic enough for families, but what if you're part of a divorced family? Well, national life coach and author Stephen J. King is here to help you head into the season with fewer headaches. Welcome. You could not have come at a better time, Stephen. Well, it's great to be with you. <laughs> because here's the thing. We were all talking about this yesterday. Blended families can be very challenging. Sometimes things go very wrong, just like this. Uh, your blues and greens are wonderful, but your he's and she's are a little mixed up. Sister's locked in a bathroom. What sister? I don't know her name yet. I don't know whether I'm 14 red eggs or what. Hey, can't any food around here. Now, what's the name of this organization? It's an emergency. The Beardsleys are here. Yours, mine, and ours, right? <laughs> this type of situation, though, not just for the movies. What are your tips? What's your advice? I mean, as a divorced parent, how do you make the holidays more enjoyable for everyone? Oh, well, first of all, holidays can be very stressful whether you're divorced or not. Sure. Yes. Yes. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're divorced and you're trying to blend some families. You have to be um, very intentional about creating some new traditions. You know, we all have our old traditions that we want to yep, hold yep. on to. But when two families come together, you want to create those new things that are fun that you can do together each year. I know a family that does a Christmas cruise now every year on Ooh, three days that's after, fun. after Christmas. And different ways to decorate the tree or, you know, those yeah. traditions are important. So, but it's hard to to let go of the old traditions, right? Yeah, I mean, that's how, how you do that. that. Yeah, like, and, and it is. You, but you don't have to let go of those things in a lot of ways. You can affirm the traditions of, of all the children from both families yeah. uh, while still creating some new ones new together. Ones. Uh, no compromise. Yeah, absolutely. Does it change a little bit, though, based on the age of the children as well? Because I think it's a whole different problem when you're mm -hmm. dealing with five-year-olds versus teenagers. Right. You know? Absolutely, sure. absolutely. And, and, you know, the whole split parent thing, where do they spend this holiday or that holiday? One of the things I often suggest is just create an alternative day to celebrate the holiday. Whether That's it's a great idea. Yeah. I actually have a client. They celebrate Christmas on um, Christmas Eve. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Now, <laughs> we celebrated in my, with my kids this year. They're older now, but we celebrated Thanksgiving on Tuesday this year. Hmm. And oh, there you had go. A big, big to do with the house. And so. it's good advice. And you have a book as well. It's called New Horizons. And so it's a guide to healing and recovery after divorce. And it's also very personal. Well, why is that? You know, after my divorce, my kids were 15, 12, and 9 at the time, and uh, I went through a pretty rough year, a uh, year, year and a half after mm -hmm. the divorce. And I knew if I was doing that, there was a lot of others out there Definitely. who were going through the same thing. Yeah. And so it's very personal because I just wanted to share both from the heart and, you know, from the emotional side, the mental side. And, uh, yeah, it's a very personal book. Yeah, yeah. And the and dynamic you know, changes for sure. I think it's interesting because I'll just share a little a bit, but this is my first Christmas spending after my divorce as ah. well. So it's become a challenge. So what are some of the positive things that you can give us to keep a positive attitude? Yeah, you, you know, you really have to take care of yourself. If you have kids, it's all about the kids. Certainly they come first. But you have to make sure you do those things. Take care of yourself. Get a little time away. Do the things you like to do. Listen to some music. You have some great music going on here. Right? <laughs> the commercial breaks. Yeah, that's videos. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, listen to your favorite music. Do some of the things that really lift your spirits that you like to do. I think one of the dangers we suffer, especially right after a divorce, is kind of withdrawn mm -hmm. from the world. Yeah, that's because, natural. And we go through some depression. You, you can combat that by making the choices to do things that lift you up. Yeah. Uh, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Now, what about gift giving? You know, when you have a divorce, you've got the mom who's giving gifts to the kids, you've got the dad who's giving the gifts. Sometimes it becomes a little bit of a competition yeah. who's giving the kids yeah. better gifts. That's a good point. Do you have any tips on that? I, I don't know so much about the gift giving, but I'll say this. One of the things that I tried to do, not always successfully, with my kids was say, look, we're going to have a no-stress holidays. Mm -hmm. if, if you need to go into another commitment with, with your mom, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. I'm all for it. Go mm -hmm. do it and enjoy it. And I tried to take away the stress of, you know, who's who's Them getting feeling more. like they're right. battled. Yeah, exactly. That is right. Yeah. You know, because the kids yeah. didn't ask for divorce. Right. It wasn't yeah. there. Well, we're big on communication, of Absolutely. course, yeah. open communication Absolutely. and encouraging that, right, Jada? Right. And, you right. know, I think you have to set that schedule. Like you said, just because you don't open presents on the Christmas day doesn't mean you can't do it on the 27th. It's yeah. just a right. day. And That's it's about right. celebrating together. We had a viewer at the top of our show, and she wrote in, 
and she's going into the holidays with the burden of an argument that had happened a few months before with mm. her sister and brother-in-law. So how do you recommend she handle this situation? Because it's it's weird when you're you're forced into these family occasions. Right. You know, the holidays are coming whether you like it or not. You can't avoid it. Uh, How do you absolutely. drop the drama? Well, <laughs> hey, yeah, good question. Um, Help us. You, you know, I, I, I always think that if you can um, talk things out before you ever get to that holiday, yep. um, you know, I think that's the way to go. So just uh, had the hard yeah. conversation right, now. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, it's not doesn't always work. It's not always easy. Yeah, but yeah. nobody wants to be... You know, in a holiday situation where people are grumbling. Yeah, you don't want the blow up. Yeah, you're right. Very yeah, right, true. Right. Very true. Well, yeah. Stephen, thank you so much for thank sharing you. your advice. Thank you.